On the night of November 1, 2002, 18-year-old Susanna von Richthofen called the police in Sao Paulo, Brazil, to report an unknown assailant attack on her family's mansion, killing her parents. Patrol officers arrived on the scene and found the bodies of two people in the bedroom. The home had been ransacked. Thus began the story of Brazil's most high-profile criminal case of recent years. There is no crime more terrible than that which a daughter can commit against her parents, the judge said, sentencing Susan von Richthofen to 39 years. Susan played the part of the grieving daughter superbly at her parents' funeral on November 3, 2002, knowing full well that their murderer was herself. But what could drive a girl to commit such a terrible crime? Suzanne Louise von Richthofen was an attractive, charming, and intelligent 18-year-old who had everything she could have ever dreamed of. Born and raised in the wealthy Sao Paulo area of Brazil, Susan lived in a luxurious mansion with her parents. The girl's father was a German engineer, Manfred von Richthofen, her mother, Marisha, of Brazilian descent, worked as a psychiatrist. Susan also had a younger brother, Andreas. Susan did very well in school and was an ambitious teenager, everyone predicted a great future for her. After high school she began to study law at the most prestigious university in Brazil, the Pontifical Catholic University, PUC, first love. At 16, Susan met 18-year-old Daniel Cravinius, who had recently been kicked out of college for failing. He was giving private lessons to her brother in building and operating airplane models, and he immediately took notice of the beautiful girl. Susan's parents didn't even notice when the young men began dating, but when they learned of their relationship, they couldn't approve. After all, Daniel didn't have a steady job and abused alcohol. Who would want such a husband for their only and beloved daughter? Nevertheless, the couple continued to date. Daniel even painted a picture dedicated to Susan, which she hung in her room, and the girl gave him a pillowcase with an embroidered declaration of love, which he constantly used. A disastrous relationship. The von Richthofens pressed their daughter to come to her senses and end her relationship with Daniel because they saw the devastating effect it was having on Susan. Her grades deteriorated and she began to drink alcohol. But Susan was so in love with Daniel that no words had any effect on her. By 2002 she had given up trying to change her parents' minds about her boyfriend and began asking them to buy her an apartment where she could live with him. Of course, they flatly refused. They told Susan that she could do whatever she wanted when she became independent, but that as long as she lived under their roof, she would follow their rules. In October 2002, another quarrel arose between them, during which Manfred and Marisha threatened their daughter to break off all relations with her. In response, she decided to take their lives. Halloween in person. On the night of October 31, 2002, Susan waited until her parents were asleep and took her 15-year-old brother, Andreas, to an internet cafe all night and returned home herself with Daniel and his 26-year-old brother, Christian. She turned off the alarm and security cameras and stealthily led the men inside, showing them where her father and mother slept. Susan sat on the couch in the living room and watched television while her parents' screams rang out upstairs. Half an hour later, Daniel and Christian did what Susan had asked them to do. After that, the young men made a mess of the house, breaking and scattering things and taking all the cash they could find. Then they went to a bar to celebrate the crime, from sadness to joy. At 3 a.m. Susan picked up Andreas from the cafe and drove her unsuspecting brother home, where she soon discovered her parents and called the police. On November 3rd, just hours after Manfred and Marisha's funeral, confused neighbors watched Susan and Daniel happily splashing around in the pool as they celebrated the girl's 19th birthday. The neighbors couldn't believe that Susan, who had been crying her eyes out a couple of hours before and whom they were trying to comfort, could transform herself so quickly and forget about her parents' death. They had no idea that it was this sweet girl who was responsible for organizing the murders. Surveillance The police immediately suspected Susan of the crime. Judge for yourself, there were no signs of forced entry, and the burglars left many valuable items, such as Marisha's gold jewelry with diamonds. All this suggested that what they were facing was not a botched burglary, but a staged one. So the cops began following Susan and Daniel. They soon learned that Daniel's brother, Christian, had bought an expensive motorcycle, paying cash for it. The purchase price was many times his annual income, which looked highly suspicious. Creepy plan. As for Susan, she had almost taken possession of her parents' assets to the tune of $17 million. The police saw that she did not miss Manfred and Marisha in the least, but was actively communicating with lawyers about the inheritance. So the police realized that Susan may well have gone on a crime because of her parents' wealth. And now the only thing she needed to do to gain control of the entire estate was to get rid of Andreas. Fortunately, 
The police uncovered this planned crime in time. Upon apprehending Susan on November 9th, law enforcement found a revolver sewn inside a teddy bear in her room. The girl immediately confessed to everything and turned in the Cravenius brothers. The trial. The trial dragged on for several years. At the final hearing on July 22, 2006, Susan cried and put all the blame on Daniel, insisting that he had threatened to leave her if they did not end Manfred and Marisha. Daniel, on the other hand, said that he was protecting Susan from her father and mother, who raised their hands against her because they were alcoholics. This sounded even more absurd than his ex-girlfriend's words. In the end, Susan and Danielle were sentenced to 39 years in prison, and Christian was sentenced to 38. But don't be too quick to rejoice in this punishment, how Susan's life turned out. You may not know that in many prisons in Brazil, if prisoners behave well, they are transferred to a semi-open regime, where criminals can leave the penitentiary quite often on holidays like Christmas, Father's Day or Mother's Day, as crazy as that sounds in relation to the crime of von Richtholfen. Susan became eligible in 2011, and four years later she was even allowed to take full-time classes at Taubat University, where she studied medicine. From 2014 to 2016, Susan dated fellow inmate Sandra Regina Gomez, and in 2017 she met Rogerio Wilberg, who was visiting his sister, who was incarcerated in the same prison as Susan. Their relationship ended with a wedding in 2021. According to Pastor Vieira, Susan has been a long-time attendee of an evangelical church and has told him more than once that she would like to become a missionary. Although it sounds a bit surreal, further life for the Cravenius brothers. Daniel transferred to a semi-open regime in 2013, and in 2018 he was transferred to an open regime, something like parole, where a convict serves the rest of his sentence at large. That is, he served only 16 years out of 39. Christian also received an open regime. Interestingly, both brothers married, had children, and lived fairly normal lives, while Susan remains on the semi-open regime. In 2021, though, Christian committed a motorcycle theft and was sent back to prison, where he is now on a closed regime. And how is Andreas doing? Susan didn't see a dime of her parents' money. All of it went to her brother, who received his doctorate in chemistry. Unfortunately, after several years in the profession, he became addicted to illegal substances and alcohol. All this led to him slowly sinking to the bottom and leading a reclusive lifestyle. Joyfully, in 2021, he voluntarily went to a drug treatment clinic and underwent treatment. He was the main victim of this crime, says a professor at the University of Sao Paulo's Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences. In addition to being extremely intelligent, he was always attentive, polite and kind. He had enormous potential. I want to believe that things will work out for him. And I hope that each of you, my dear subscribers, will learn a lesson from this sad story. What is it? Let me know in the comments, I'd be interested in your opinions. If you like the video, please support my channel by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, there are a lot of interesting things ahead of you.